Next section is um, thinking about the vectors in three-dimensional space. And this is a standard way of um, sketching the three-dimensional space, especially the, um, pay attention to the, uh, how it's labeled. Right, This could be the corner of this room down there, right? To your right, in the bottom lower corner, there is this vertical axis, Z, over there. And this uh, front, front side here, that's x-axis. And uh, along this, th th this side of the wall, that's y-axis. I hope it is the same orientation to you by looking at there. Is right? This is x-axis positive. That's y-axis there. And that's the z-axis. So you're looking at the right below corner of that room. And that's how it's sketched it here. Most of the time, we're going to sketch things in this way. But sometimes, if you look at from that direction, not from this, you know, Octon is the first octon. There are eight division of these spaces. Sometimes, if you look at this side, the picture looks better. Sometimes it's disoriented, right? So, so the the next thing they explain it is that how we um, determine is the correct orientation is something called right hand rule. This is called orientation in, in geometry. Is um, the answer is, is the following. You think about this loop, and x is going to y, and y is going to z, and z is going to x. If you think about this orientation, like that, and first, you, you keep this in, in this order. So if you go from positive x-axis to the positive y-axis, like rotate around like this, down there on the floor, and have your right hand and have the same orientation so your four fingers are actually pointing to the same same direction if you look from above it's, this is actually the counterclockwise rotation if you put your fingers to that direction so your four fingers your thumb is actually pointing the same direction as z then if it is disoriented and in slightly different pictures then you can use this test to see if it is correctly sketched but often um, you don't need that much of a juggling just to figure out, but uh, here is some examples. See if you can use your right hand to determine this is the correct picture or not. So this loop is x, and x to y. So if you want to do oh, x to y, that's a positive direction. It means it's a positive x-axis. That's a, So this is a rotation, right? So if you put your four fingers to that direction, do you think your z is in the correct direction? right hand so this is good picture this is it is is in correct orientation let's try the second picture see which one we want to try which is convenient x to y or y to z or z to x which is conveniently written here x to z a z to x is a z to x so z to x is like this what can you do do that like that to forward is backward to you. Or which one's more convenient? Maybe Z to X. Z Y to Z here. Y to Z is more convenient to me. Y to Z like that. Then X should be the other one pointing the other direction, right? Something's awkward, it's probably wrong. <laughs> Hope that's correct. If you think about the Y to Z, so if you put your fingers like that, your thumb must be the remaining axis. X axis is pointing to me, is pointing this direction. So it's disorient not sketched it correctly. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. How about the third one? Uh, sorry about that. Let's just look at it here. Um, let me capture that again. about this one y to z seems um, easy if you do that and oh, doing like this to me <laughs> y to z and x is pointing the other direction so it's correct or not it's not correct right pointing that this should be pointing that x positive axis must be there this is incorrectly sketched right let's see if we can just do that in the fourth one here x and y X is going to that, Y to that direction. 
pointing that like that. Correct or not correct? Correct, right? So sometimes you have to look around in different directions to see if the picture is uh, better to see what, what's going on. Any question? Go back in here. Um, which one's the hardest one? It, this uh, this one was it weird? What if I sketch it like this? Y there, and X there, and Z there. Then we have um, Y to Z direction like that, right? Then you can see that easily putting your fingers Y and Z, fingers like that, and X is pointing backward direction. So this is slightly rotated around so that you can apply your right hand rule a little bit easier. <laughs> All right, next challenge is that plotting these three numbers in the three-dimensional space, right? So I'm going to show you. Um, you sketch X and Y and Z. It's very challenging. And then I give you coordinate X, Y, Z, and then you will be asked to sketch this point. So here's the idea. Plotting 1, 2, negative 3. This is one way to do it. 1, 2, negative 3. Plot... 1, 2, negative 3. So here's the z-axis, and here's the x-axis, and the y-axis, and there's a negative y-axis, there's a negative x-axis, there's a negative z-axis, right? So there's a space is sketched. So x-coordinate is 1, so you go one unit here, and you draw this horizontal line that is parallel to y, and y has two units, right? So go about two units here, and draw a horizontal line that is parallel to x-axis. So you draw this parallelogram box down there, but if you really go into space, if you look at it, this is actually a rectangular box. And if you look above from z direction, here's x and y, and here's 1, 2 right there. Do you see these two lines? Um, dotted line is consistent with these two. If you look from above, you have this 1, and here's the two units there. Okay? Now, z unit is a negative 3, right? I'm going to change the positive 3 so it's not too confusing. So you go with 3 units above, 1, 2, 3, right? From that position, you're going to draw two parallel lines. Parallel lines to x's. It looks like that. x-axis. Another parallel line to y-axis. Like that. And then start from here, you draw all these lines above. That meets above. And then draw another parallel lines to create this location is hovering out there. Just a rectangular box you have to create. That's the position 1, 2, 3, right? That's one way to sketch it. So a lot of parallelogram, par parallel lines you have to draw to um, visualize this thing. Um, remaining one minute, I think I can do the following and then I'll, I'll end it. This is linked to um, well, I'll do it next time. I'll show you the, how to use this software, which is free. which is already linked to our uh, Edmodo folder. If you go there, you can download this program. And it's a wonderful program. And you can actually sketch this one in three-dimensional way and manipulate and rotate it. Um, um, that's so it's going to be a great tool if you have difficulty with the visualize um, three-dimensional objects. So I'll see you on Friday, right? So please grade your work and put it up there. Yeah, two exercises, four points. Let's, uh, I think this is going to be my exercise prof, <laughs> exercise one. All right. Often I'm going to um, sketch things in arbitrary way, not really going to draw this x-axis and y-axis and z-axis clearly and, and do that. And just uh, all you need to know is just imagine that in the you know, usual logic, not um, geometric intuition. All right. So this is a 
three numbers, but you now you know identify this is a position and in three dimensional space, right? Three comma two comma negative one. So here's the origin O, zero comma zero comma zero. And what is that guy? Here's the vector three comma two comma negative two. Totally ignoring where they actually how it looks like in three dimensional, three -dimensional space. How is this guy? He's a negative one comma negative two comma negative one, right? Right? Just imagine this is in the three dimensional space, two line segment there. You can even use the Mathematica to sketch that later. So what is the meaning of this adding to vector? The parallelogram thing, right? What is the meaning of this one in here? Multiplying 6 is the opposite direction of that vector and doing um, by 6, right? Let's begin with simple exercises. Let's go ahead and calculate this. I'm just going to keep drawing this picture. It is not necessary to draw this picture to answer this problem. I just inserted that since we're doing this for the first time. This exercise one. Compute these two vectors. All right, was that okay? Simply adding these two components and multiplying that scalar to these three numbers and that's the answer. And that's what that coordinate is. That's the vector starting from the origin to you. Uh, if you do the parallelogram, what is the answer to that coordinate? Simply adding these each coordinate to each other. Negative six opposite. Good? Any question? Right, we're going to skip the sketching part and focus only on um, this part B. Right, this will be exercise number two. If V and W are any two vectors in where? Three-dimensional space, since we're in that section and show that v minus one-third w and 3v minus w are parallel to each other. If you draw a picture, an arbitrary picture of v and w and sketch this thing and sketch that thing, that's probably the hardest way to go about it. But it could be the beginning to understand uh, the problem and then you may think about oh maybe this is a better way you can't use an example a specific example to show this one that's only proof for that one particular case so you have to argue in general
So how is that the idea? If you believe if, if two vectors are parallel to each other, for example, if here like this or stand there like that, here's a V and W, if they are truly parallel to each other, and the only thing that is different is the size, right? The direction is exactly the same. So would you believe that this W would be scalar multiple of V? Does that make sense? The scalar stretch that'll make the size correct. Once the size is correct, parallel, that means that direction is exactly the same. So as a vector, component-wise, they must be same, equal to each other. Make sense? That idea? Yeah. So I was testing, if this vector is parallel to the other vector, then there must be a scalar multiple t, right? So that they too become equal to each other. So I expanded the scalar multiple in here and compared with these two vectors. V minus one third of W is left hand side. Right hand side is 3t is uh, multiplied right here is negative t w. t is a scalar, w is a vector. 3t is a scalar, w is a vector. Right. Now you guess that. What if my 3t is equal to the coefficient of the v, the scalar multiple, invisible 1? So I wrote, let's say 3t equals 1. That is going to match v and v here, right? Sounds good. The second coefficient is negative one third, and that must agree with the second one is negative negative one third must be negative t. You're looking for one scalar, and you're ending up in a two equations, right? That's usually bad news, right? Maybe it's not inconsistent, but not consistent. But if you solve it, it's one third, and the second one one third, right? So one third works for both coefficients. So one third is the actually uh, doing the job. So therefore, one thing is a scalar multiple of the other, therefore it's, uh, it is parallel to each other. If they end up in a different, then you have to draw a different conclusion, yes. Can you also say that V is scalar multiple of W with a uh, constant of 3? Right, but you have to work in a, you can't do this separately, no. You have to do both of them at the same time, right? Not just that, okay, 3V is a scalar multiple of V, therefore, is a is a parallel that doesn't work. You have to deal with the, the whole chunk of a vector v minus w. So if you see that three works, there you you have to do three v. Um, you have to deal with this one. Oh, if you expand that is three v minus w. So therefore, it's that. Then that's a correct answer. If you see that three, that's very easy, not going through its complicated equation. Three will work, and that that's true. But not just for v, but you have to deal with the whole, whole expression. So that will be another quick proof, right? If 3 is coming to you really easy. If not, you always deal with an equation. That's what that mathematical equation is about. If the answer to that, like t equals 3, is not coming to you quickly, then you have to go about algebraically setting up an equation. Because I tend to do problem in that way than relying on quickness of uh, <laughs> cleverness of other people you might have. All right, any other question, comments? Make sense? So if you did this, that's a, you know, full credit instead of doing this. All right. So again, we're not going to do the illustration part, but we'll do this algebraically. All right. V is a vector from, uh, with a component, the 3, 2, negative 2. So that's a displacement vector, right? Displacement vector. It doesn't tell you where it starts, just the component part. Does that make sense? Let W be the vector from this point to that point. So that gives you the initial point, terminal point. And that's also a displacement vector you can see. So what is vector V plus W? And we're not going to do this part in here. You did this problem in two dimensional, and it's, it's the same thing. That's exercise, yes. Is that number two? Yeah. Three, thank you. So picture could be arbitrary picture here. I don't know, V is a component three, two, negative two, so why don't we just interpret as a position vector? This is not the only way to do it, by the way. This is a V. You can interpret it as a position vector. Is that right? But W is not, W is here. Elsewhere is a 2, 1, 3, and negative 1, 0, negative 1. That's W. And they want to ask you to compute V plus W, right? That's the question.
All right? How was it? Does that make sense? V is that vector and W is elsewhere, but what matters in the vector calculation is a component. So as a displacement vector, the component is negative 3, negative 1, negative 4. So you parallel transport this one and join the initial point 0, then this coordinate will be exactly the component. So if you do the parallelogram, and then the, the coordinate on the other side is 0, 1, and negative 6 by adding the two components of this vector. Any question? Right. right, to to get the W here, this is not the vector and that's not the vector. To get the component of the vector, you have to subtract the coordinate from the terminal uh, from the terminal point, um, terminal point initial point, right? So coordinate is not necessarily the vector, and that's uh, the one thing. That, okay, good. So I'm introducing this um, new thing. This uh, vector that has i one zero zero as a terminal point is a position vector going from there. You see, you're familiar with this picture now, right? from here to there. That vector is called I vector here, both face. This Y coordinate, 0, 1, 0, that particular vector is called J vector. And pointing upward, 0, 0, 1, that vector is called K vector. And it's written here, all both face, in, in their type up like that. Then it turns out you can write down the other vectors in terms of this vector neatly, and sometimes they use this notation. Okay. Let's, uh, let me use that picture. All right. So I'm going to write a random example. Like two times a vector i is not imaginary number. It's a vector i in that direction, and negative three times the j vector plus to uh, five times k vector, right? These are all scalar multiples of this vector. If you add them together, it must be a vector, right? So what is meaning of two times i? You stretch this one to two times there, right? Negative three j that will be opposite direction and stretch three times. Five k will be stretched five times the positive direction. And whatever this addition of the vector, and that's the answer. But algebraically, so simple. So what is this two i? 2 comma 0 comma 0 is that right what about the second one 0 comma negative 3 comma 0 and third one 0 comma 0 comma 5 let's add the components and what is it 2 comma negative 3 comma 5 right we know this type of vector and they're saying you can write this ABC component and broken into a vector equation like this so if I have ABC you can always write that vector as scalar A times the standard vector I Scalar b times standard vector j, scalar c times standard vector k. So I want you to go back and forth freely now, right? If you look at this vector, you mean it, oh, that's just a, b, c, right? If you see a, b, c, oh, you can write it as a vector like that. That's called standard basis. Yes. Is that yes, like yes, it is standard. I, th I think some use like this. This is more standard. I didn't see many. You, you're looking at this vector? Notation here? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Right. So that's a vector notation. Um, so, th so this, usually I use this, my fingers like that. This is x, y coordinates here. You see my thumb is x axis and y uh, fingers, you know, don't be offended by anything here. But, uh, but it, you, can, you can rotate it like this, right? Rotate it like this. Those are also you know, important part of this whole analysis. You want to look at it in a whole different way of, of this thing. <laughs> All right. But I, J, K is a particular basis like this. All right. Well, let's get this problem. Express the vector whose components are e time e and pi and negative square root in standard basis, and express the vector joining from that to that by uh, using the standard basis. Part B is um, is a matter of 
order of operation, right? You can write this one in terms of standard basis, write that one in standard basis, and then do the operation, or you com do the component first, and then turn that into a standard oper um, the basis operation. It's up to you, but I'll do it in a hard harder way so that you can see something that's not been done. <laughs> so this is our exercise number four. Is that correct? Thanks for the input. No hands. Hate it. Right, like I said, I did it a harder way. <laughs> if you just compute the component of this vector, the usual way you compute, and then express the vector in terms of i, j, k, k would be a lot easier than juggling with this vector calculation. But the sometimes uh, it, it comes in this context, you have to kind of get used to the how to simplify scalars. That's why I did it this way, to show you if it is all given in vector form, just be able to collect the same vector and simplify the scalar the way you usually add and subtract numbers, right? So, Mr. Morrison, yes. If there wasn't a zero for the, for the J, uh, we did have a pi plus Pi plus something, yes. Uh huh, that's right, yeah, right. Because zero, they tend to not write, yeah. Because here's zero, yes. Well, pi minus zero is a, what, what's in in here, right? Yeah. Anything else? All right. Um, maybe I can just do that problem in three minutes, and let's, let's use that. Not an exercise, but it's a fun application of the problem. Suppose that two navigators who cannot see one another that can communicate by radio because of the fog or something and wish to determine its relative position to their ship. So ship 1A is here, ship B is there. They can't see each other, but they have compass to, so they know where the north direction and things like that. And they, don't, they can also see <coughs> the lighthouse here and suppose it kind of creates a sound like boom sound and give you a 
blue light so, so that you can see how you see the lights and how long the sound come and therefore you can determine the sound therefore I know the direction to the lighthouse by measuring and the the difference between you see the uh, the light and how the sound arrives from that you can determine the length right I think that's enough information to con determine that vector correct and how about from B and they can do that too they can't see each other this guy's out of fuel this guy can't reach that they gotta get to that ship B but they gotta know the direction how do I go from here to there I can't see them but I see the lighthouse like that and with a compass I gotta compute the direction so I have V I have W vector we can compute each, uh, communicate each other with the radio so they tell me that's W I see the lighthouse there from here I see lighthouse V so how should I go from here to get there to help them They're out of fuel right so what is this vector that's what they want right how do you compute the vector so to go from here to there that's the displacement vector going from here to there right so what should be the correct displacement in here is this direction right so what is it negative W so uh, they communicate each other and just do all right V plus W that will be this relative direction there correct so it's V minus W is the answer they tell you we see in W location the lighthouse and the ship A that says we are in V oh it must be V minus W there so we'll head toward to that and we'll meet all right that's the end of today's class <laughs>